Hi, and welcome back to the Indusoft Web Studio video training series for version 7.1. Today we're going to cover the topic of tags and everything associated with it. Um, tags, in general, uh, are variable names, uh, English type or whatever language you choose, type variable names. Um, but they're uh, much, much more than that. And we're going to start out by uh, showing you the idea of what tags are here in the help system and how they're used throughout the product. Now again I'm starting this training series uh, using a preliminary version of the documentation and I'll, I'll flip over to uh, another diagram in a moment but uh, if we go into about this application how the software works and internal structure and data flow I'm going to scroll down here and show you a diagram. Now this is what has been in version 7.0 uh, and it's being updated for 7.1, and I'll, I'll flip over to another graphic in a moment. But in general, the tags database is at the central core of the product. All the data flows through the tag database. So, for example, here in the viewer, uh, which is now really uh, under the TCP IP server, is um, the screens. And as you're viewing screens and changing values or set points, let's say on a slider or entering a number it goes into the tag database and then maybe from there it goes out to the driver runtime it goes to the PLC and if a temperature or some level or pressure updates the driver runtime reads that from the real uh, real world values updates the tag database and then the uh, screen would update after that now I'm going to flip over to uh, PowerPoint slide that I have that's the updated version of this and here what we'll see is the tags database is again the central core but a little bit differently the viewer instead of being its own uh, kind of task or thread is uh, part of the TCP IP server and we've done that to do uh, some various things in the product but uh, that changed uh, I believe even prior to version 7.0 but uh, we're just uh, updating the, the chart so you should see this chart or something very similar to this in the version 7.1 documentation when that comes out. Uh, in addition to that, the background tasks, the alarms are, are uh, off of here, and you can see all the different uh, ways that information could get into and out of tags, and the fact uh, of this is, is a core feature of the product is of Indusoft Web Studio, and the fact that screens can update uh, driver information, driver information can be updated, and talk to um, OPC, uh, either client or server, and databases. So we can share database information with drivers and OPC clients. So that's what makes Indusoft Web Studio such a powerful product and the ability to share communications among uh, different devices. Now, the tag naming and, and conventions here, when defining application tags or project tags, you must adhere to the following syntax. They must begin with a tag letter, and after that you can use any combination of letters, numbers, and the underscore character. Oops, let me go back here. Uh, and the underscore character. You can use a maximum of 255 characters to name the tag name. Now, uh, that seems like a lot, and uh, it is, but uh, when you start getting up to, to having 10 million uh, tag names in a project, that uh, it becomes vital to have a lot of different character space. So you're... you're tag names can be unique. Application tags must be unique from all other tag names and built-in uh, Indusoft functions. So for example, um, you cannot name a tag uh, that is the same name as a system tag, meaning one of the built-in uh, tags such as the date or the month or the seconds clock, uh, and you cannot name tag names the same as other uh, built-in scripting functions. Uh, also critical is tags are not case sensitive so even if you don't use the same case with an uppercase at the beginning or a mixed case uh, it, it's irrelevant uh, they are all the same also tag names are all pretty much internal let me go back to the uh, chart uh, that I showed you just a moment ago all tags uh, are pretty much internal and other uh, HMI or SCADA packages may have the concept of internal tags versus external tags now our tags are all pretty much internal and the fact that uh, for example, if I have a screen tag, or a tag that's on the screen, being shown on a screen, that gets in its information from this tag database. And as I mentioned a moment ago, if that tag 
is being referenced in a driver worksheet or a driver uh, at all, the real world value will come in through the driver runtime and update the internal tag in the tags database, and then the screen will then update based off of that. Similar to other different ways we can get the communications into the tags, but uh, all the tags are kept locally, and we don't have this concept of, of internal tags and external tags. It's just all the information comes in through the tag database. Now, we have four main tag types. Boolean uh, are just a bit, uh, integer, real, and string. And one of the things I should point out with Booleans is a digital value of 0 or 1 representing false or true. In Indusoft Web Studio, a non-zero value is also considered true. So not only 1, but if you have a 10 or 100 or 235, that's also considered true as well as a negative number. Again, as long as it's non-zero. So a negative number, if I try to write a negative number into a Boolean, it will come up as uh, true. Uh, an integer is four bytes. They are signed integer number, positive or negative, or zero. Uh, and they're equivalent to the C-type uh, programming language signed long integer with a range of negative 2.1 billion to positive 2.1 billion. So uh, good amount of storage in there. And real uh, is a floating point with 8 bytes, which is a real number internally stored as a double word. It's equivalent to the C-type programming language, double precision floating point. Uh, so you can get some very large numbers in there. Uh, strings are alphanumeric data up to 1024 characters uh, contained in the string tag itself. That's not to be confused with the name of the string tag, which can be up to 255 characters. Within the string tag, you can store up to uh, 1,024 characters. And the, the, um, the text that can be in there, or the, the string values, can be letters, numbers, or any special characters, ampersands, at signs, plus, minus, parentheses, uh, including ASCII character set and the Unicode characters as well. That's what will allow uh, additional languages uh, beyond, way beyond English and the Roman character sets as well. So let me give you some examples of these. Let me go back into the development environment and here I'm going to go under the global tab and in the project tags. I've already created one tag here that I'll use in a little while. But here under the datasheet view uh, I'm going to create a tag called auto mode and that will be a boolean type and then I'll create a tag that's an integer type. I'll call it index. And again, that will be integer. Then I'll create one that is uh, a real. We'll call this analog. And just as a time saving, I don't have to move my mouse over there. I can just cursor to that or tab over to that. Uh, I'm going to hit the letter R on my keyboard, and it'll drop right into real. And then I'm going to make a string type tag. We'll call this uh, product name and come over here and type the letter S to make that a string. So now you can see that uh, the different icons for the different uh, tag types, there's a little stair step here or a little uh, square wave for auto mode which was a boolean. The stair step is the integer type. This little sine wave is a real. The little document is a string type. And there's some other types too as we get going here. Uh, again, the tags are not case sensitive. And this list here in the project tags uh, are in the order that they were the tags were created. So we'll, we'll talk about sorting uh, that in, in a moment. And uh, let's see. If we go into uh, arrays, and let me go back into the uh, presentation here for a moment. Um, uh, an array is a, is a set of tags of the same data type with the same name that use an index to uniquely identify them. And by the way, Indusoft Web Studio only supports one-dimensional array tags only. Uh, it turns out that VBScript within Indusoft Web Studio supports multiple dimensional arrays, and I believe it's up to 60 dimensional arrays. It's, that's quite huge, but uh, currently the tags uh, with an array type are only one-dimensional. We'll talk a little bit about classes here in a moment, but a class tag is a compound tag type um, that's been defined by a class template. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And the template can be uh, one or more different data types. 
within the class. So I could have some real, some integers, some strings, so on and so forth. And class tags are helpful when you're developing applications that have uh, items such as tanks that uh, have multiple properties being monitored or controlled, such as the level of a tank, the temperature within a tank, maybe the pressure or the contents of what, uh, what's in that. Um, notice that the maximum number of members for each class is 512, as long as it doesn't exceed the overall number of tags that you have supported by the license for that particular project. We also have another uh, thing here, which is a pointer tag that's uh, basically an indirect uh, tag in the tag database. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, a class tag, for those of you who are similar, uh, familiar with uh, programming languages, this is similar to what you might think of as a structure. So let's go back uh, to the project here. And what we want to do is um, talk about, uh, let's do some arrays here. So let's, let's create a new tag called part and uh, I'll make that uh, an array and by making this an array I just have to put a number in here so I'm going to choose let's say three now I've made that uh, an array of three and notice the square brackets are now around the, the uh, icon here that that dictates that it's a, an array now uh, here the array is not uh, size of three this is actually the maximum element number so it's really four arrays, uh, element 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that gives us uh, four tags there. And uh, hopefully you can see this down here. The tag count right now is 9. And where that comes from is I have four tags here, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into classes. Uh, let's jump down here for a second and show, for example, auto mode. In the, in the database spy and currently the value is zero I can put a one or a zero in there and if I try to put a number that's non-zero let's say uh, 100 when I enter that that goes to a value of one and let's change it to zero and if I go back to uh, try to put in a negative 10 let's say again it writes it to one so a non-zero um, value uh, indicates a, a true. Uh, let's go into index and in index being an integer, I can put a, a, a number in there, uh, or I can put a very large number in there if I wanted to. And here under analog, which is a real type, uh, you can see that I have floating points. So I can put something like 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, point three four five. And here under product name, I can put uh, some, some text, so maybe we'll call this uh, cookies. Yeah, we're in a food processing plant, let's say. Now, uh, let's also show the array. Now, the way that the array works is I have to put my element number inside the square bracket, so I can call it uh, part, and then inside the square brackets have a zero, and I'll put a value of 12 in there. Now, the other element, part uh, one, or other elements uh, could also have different values within them. I could go all the way up to three in here. So uh, depending on how I wanted to use that within my product, it makes it a little bit easier to keep track of everything. Now you don't have to have just a constant in here. Uh, for example, if I choose an index of one, I can put part and then inside a square bracket use another tag name as my element number. So here I'm referencing uh, element one uh, within this, so that gives me this one. If I change this index back to zero, you can see that it now references uh, element zero. Uh, another point to note is you could put uh, some simple expressions in here, but you cannot have spaces. So if I can say index plus one, that will work, but index space plus space one uh, will not, and, and there's more information about that in the help system as well. Uh, so let's take a, a, a quick look at uh, what, what can the maximum uh, number of array elements be it can be uh, 16 384 and let's see now let's go uh, the next step and create a class now classes are over here first we have to set up uh, the class itself I'm going to insert a class and uh, you don't have to do this but a good way to uh, help you understand this later on and, and separate these names from actual tag names is to put a lowercase c 
referencing that it's a class. Now I'm going to say tank and there are many different ways to do this and, and you don't certainly have to use the lowercase c. Um, this is just a convention that I use but uh, there are many other ways to do this. So with uh, that said hit enter and this will give us the template for the class uh, C tank and here I might have a temperature that uh, could be a real number. I might have a level that's a percentage, so that might be an integer number, and uh, pressure that might be another real, and what is contained in the tank, maybe I have contents, and that'll be a string type tag. So here I have four different uh, tags that uh, are all different types contained in that class or that structure called the C tank. Now again down here if you notice that the tag count is currently nine those tags don't count against the project until I've defined them as a project tag so let me close this now if I create the tag called tank and go over here to the drop down there is a new type which is C tank which is that class and uh, I've added this tank tag here uh, notice this tag count is currently 10, uh, but as soon as I click off of this uh, and add this element, let's say that we, uh, oh, now the tag count is 13, which is uh, the 9 plus the 4 of those. Now I add uh, this as an array. Let's say I make uh, 4 total tanks, or 3 is the maximum element number. Now I actually have 25 tags. So there's uh, four tags within each of the tank times four, which is 16, plus these four, which is 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's where our total comes up to 25. Now that may seem uh, like it's consuming a lot of tags, but it, it's really convenient and, and the best way to approach using uh, these types of values. There are also other parts of IndieSoft Web Studio, which I'll show you in a moment, that um, you would think in other systems uh, actually consume tags that in IndieSoft Web Studio do not consume tags at all. Now, um, uh, something to point out here is the tank with the element number. If I go into my object finder, for example, and I want to reference one of the elements uh, that are in this class, this this array of, of class tags, I can double click on a cell. Now there are many places within IndieSoft Web Studio where you will want to open up your object finder. And if you double click on a cell, sometimes uh, it's not apparent that, okay, I double clicked on that and now it edits that, uh, which is great. But if I wanted to open up the object finder, how do I do that? Well, first I have to click off of that cell. And when the cell that I want is, is not currently selected, then I double click on it then it opens up the object finder. Now I want to get at one of the tanks, uh, let's say temperature. What I can do is I can select this class tank and it adds that up here to the selection. Now here I can go under the index. Maybe I want tank number two and I could use a tag in here if I wanted to such as index. In this case I'm not going to. I'm going to choose tank two. Say OK and that's added that to the, the uh, list here to the selection and then I can dive further into that into the member which will give me the members of the class that we created which could be contents level temperature and pressure I'm going to select temperature and say okay and that's built that for me and I haven't had to type that in or, or worse yet mistype that in say okay and that'll add that to uh, my list so I can see here that I'm getting at the temperature of tank number two and uh, currently because I haven't done anything with that it's uh, set at a level of zero. So uh, something else to point out is the um, tag count. The tag counts are for project tags that you've created. That does not count uh, uh, your system tags. Let me open up the system tags datasheet view here. Things like date and time, hour, minutes, second, so on and so forth. And you can go down here. There's also blink slow and blink fast, which which toggle at uh, 600 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds. And there's some simulation tags in here. Uh, let's see, analog value and digital value. You can use those for simulations. Uh, so you can see the different tags uh, that are part of the system tags. And again, these do not count against your, your tag count. Um, 
So let's uh, move along and talk about uh, the other types of tags that I mentioned. So let's see, which would be a pointer tag or an indirect. So let's go in here and we'll add a new uh, tag called pointer. And it's important that this be a string type tag because that's going to contain the name of another tag. So let's uh, go in here and we will add, uh, let me just overwrite this one here. We'll put in pointer. And then the other convention that we use to indirectly use that is an at sign. So we use at pointer. And currently it says it's bad because I don't have a value in here. Now, if I wanted to reference, for example, another tag, for example, auto mode, I would put the value of the string tag into pointer auto mode. And that text will then cause this at pointer to reference the auto mode tag and grab the value out of that and use that whenever I use at pointer. Now, if I want to change this to a different name, let's say analog, it will then go to the analog tag, grab the value out of that, and use that in its place. So this, this can help you um, point to different values and create screens that are, that are very uh, efficient in the way that they grab data from other points. You can just keep the same, same looking screens and just change the references and then uh, all the, the, the information will update uh, accordingly. So let's um, then move on to, oh, back to the project uh, tags. This list, first of all, is sorted in the order that the tags were created. So as you create your project tags, they will be in the order that were, they were created, if you, if you create them here or if you create them on the fly within a screen. Let me, uh, let me go do that. Let me go to this screen. Uh, I'll copy this object down that has a tag called temp. I'll make another tag called temp2. And it recognizes this because if you remember, tags must start with a letter. It says, uh, it comes across this expression and says, oh, does it start with a letter? Maybe it's a tag. It fits all the requirements for a tag. So when I hit enter in here, it says, oh, that's probably supposed to be a tag. Are you sure you want to create this? I'm going to say yes. And then it'll give me the choice to create this tag on the fly. I'll say OK. And now if I go back into my data sheet view here, you can see that it's created that at the bottom of the list. Um, so I can sort this list by right clicking up here and sort ascending in alphabetical order or descending and let's say I've sorted um, this list and let's say now I want to delete one of these tags. Let's say I don't like this particular tag. I can right click here and go to the delete line. Well the delete line is grayed out for at least a couple of possible reasons. If the project is still running you cannot delete uh, one of the tags. Uh, you wouldn't want to delete a tag out of the database while it's uh, still running, so you'd have to stop that. The other thing is, is the sort uh, cannot be being used. So if I can disable the sort, then I could come in here and delete that particular line and allows me to delete that tag. So uh, some other things that, that uh, we can do is this list you can actually uh, highlight and copy and paste out to Excel or paste, uh, copy or, and paste in from Excel. So if you uh, want to use a different editor, or maybe you've exported your list from your, your I.O. account, uh, you can bring that right here into, uh, into Soft Web Studio via pasting from Excel. Uh, also, there are other import wizards that you can bring into uh, this, which will import tags from exported uh, PLC programs or other controller programs as well. Okay, so I had a little bit of an issue while I was recording, so I've recovered from that. I'm going to insert uh, a little uh, chunk of video uh, into into this main video uh, so we can make sure that this goes smoothly. Anyway, what I'm going to do is um, replace, use the global replace up here to replace uh, the temp tag with the tag called index. And uh, again, so since I've uh, inserted this small little video, you might see some uh, different things here. But uh, when I come back, you'll see everything should be the same. So uh, I have to close all my documents and save everything before I get going here. Here on screen two, you can see that I have the temp tag here. And I'm going to save this screen as screen two. And now I can go into the global replace and say that I want to, and rather than typing this in, I will double click on that field, choose a tag called temp, and double click on this field, choose a tag called index. And now it will replace index wherever temp was throughout the project. I can click on OK. Let's open up all the documents, in this case just the one screen. 
go back to that screen and I can see here that temp was replaced with index so that's a quick way to do it and now back to the rest of the video here I can do replace on an individual document I can remove unused tags and close, uh, clean up my uh, database a little bit I can reset the tags database now when I'm using uh, Indusoft Web Studio and running on a PC um, the tag values as I'm using them uh, will stay the same values that they were uh, as I'm running and stopping my project. Now this is a function uh, to make it convenient for you. When you're running on Windows CE they reset back to their uh, normal values uh, every time you rerun the project and that can be changed. If you need the behavior to be similar you can go here under project preferences and uh, there's a checkbox here that says reset tags database when starting the project. If you click that then it will make the uh, Windows runtime uh, desktop and server runtimes uh, or development behave similar to the uh, Windows CE and embedded environment. Uh, also here I can go under cross-reference so let's say that I wanted to find where that temp tag was and use the cross-reference that will appear down here in this cross-reference and now I can go under screen and find where that is and it will open that up and show that to me. Uh, also here under properties I can get at the uh, properties of this uh, particular tag. Now this brings up another good point. There are um, there's much more information behind an individual tag than just the the tag value itself. If I go here under help and go into the help system go here under tags in the project tag database setting tag properties and a list of tag properties you can see that uh, by using this convention which is the tag name with a minus greater than and then the property name I can get at a whole list of, of individual tag properties that do more for me than just the, the value of the tag itself. I can get at the description for, for example the timestamp which would be the last time that that was changed here's also how I get at individual bits within an integer let's say uh, the min and maximum value, I can set those uh, during runtime uh, so I can change maybe and have a flexible uh, project that would scale to different machines or different processes and I could have one project that would fit all my different machines thus reducing the number of uh, projects that I'd have to maintain uh, revisions on as well. Also down here we'll come down to the alarm limits. Now this is a unique um, feature to Indusoft Web Studio is that we contain the limits for the individual alarms as properties of the tags themselves. So for example temperature might have a high limit of uh, 90% and then that does not consume an extra tag. So this is one way that we, we can reduce the number of tags by, by containing those within the tag properties themselves. So let's go back and take a look at uh, maybe the uh, timestamp that's a good easy one to see uh, so the last time that I changed auto mode uh, was a few minutes ago if I go back in here and here do auto mode and then use the minus greater than timestamp you can see that this tag was changed at this particular time and date 857 a.m. and 52 seconds 110 milliseconds now if I go in and change this uh, value of auto mode and hit enter you can see that that updates and shows the last time that that tag was changed. Now in a similar fashion let's go in back into auto mode here and um, this, oh, I, even though I put a number in there saved it as a one. Um, let's go in here and put a description. This is uh, machine mode and now I can get at auto mode minus greater than uh, description and you can see that that description actually comes from that tag database so uh, there's some ways that you can use those properties uh, throughout your project and let me make sure that uh, I'm on track here uh, let's see descriptions and cross-reference we've covered keeping the tag value so I think that's most of what I wanted to show for the basics of tags and um, uh, let me cover, let me open up this presentation. Make sure there's no more slides. We're good there. 
So um, that's what I wanted to cover in, in uh, tags. Thanks. Have a great day.